Hi, Giovanna. Hi, Tune. Virtual nature sounds like the ultimate paradox to me. What does it really mean? Well, Tune, I think most people today are familiar with the VR technology. Uh, and I would think that most people associate VR with those uh, uh, masks or glasses that you put on your head and that completely uh, lock outside the view on the external world, uh, giving the illusion of being somewhere else. Well, virtual nature uses the same technology to give people the illusion of being in a natural environment, like a forest or uh, a beach, while maybe they're just sitting at home. But I mean, how does it really work? Well, I can give you an example. Okay. Uh, in this video, um, this is uh, Ule, my colleague, walking on a treadmill in our lab. And this is a, a virtual, uh, virtual nature installation that we created for one, one of our studies. And uh, while Ule is walking on a treadmill, virtually he actually has the illusion of walking by a river in Elverum. So in this case, uh, we connected the VR headset with the treadmill in a, w in a way that uh, the experience could be more immersive by moving in the virtual environment so a person could feel like really being in a natural environment. But uh, virtual nature doesn't need to be so complex. Sometimes just the headset and, uh, for example, watching a video of uh, a 360 video of a natural environment or there are some apps available already is enough to give you that illusion. Hmm. But seriously, why do we need this? I mean, cannot people just go outside? Ideally, I would say that people should spend as much as time as possible out hmm. in nature. The experience of nature is so much greater. There are so many more stimulus that you get from being outside. For example, the fresh air or the sun on your skin or feeling the wind in your, in your hair. Mm. Uh, unfortunately though, not everybody has the time or the possibility to go outside every day. And if you think about the fact, for example, that uh, most people today live in cities and cities are becoming bigger uh, the, there is less space for nature and so the distance between people and nature is, could be bigger and not everybody may have the resources to travel to go visiting a natural park, a natural park uh, every, every day. And you have to consider that uh, the urban population is, go is growing. The UN has predicted by the year 2050 the urban population will be almost 70 percent. So almost 70% of the world population will live in cities. At the same time, we have to consider that already today there are many people who have barriers to visit natural environment. People with mobility limitations, elderly living in the nursing homes, for example, among others. And these people may not have the possibility to visit a, a forest or to go hiking in the mountains or swimming in the ocean. So virtual reality may help the people who don't have the possibility to visit nature every day to integrate nature experience in their everyday life. Uh, at the same time, we can also consider the fact that, like in the COVID pandemic, we have experienced that uh, everybody can find themselves closed inside and not having the possibility to go out. Maybe in Norway we have been a little more fortunate in this sense because throughout the lockdown uh, the institution have actually encouraged people to uh, go walking in forests or in parks to cope with the stress. At the same time in Norway there are a lot of natural environments and they are close by most people. So most people have short distance to nature. But uh, this is not the case for other countries. If I think for example in Italy where I come from. Uh, there have been periods during this pandemic that were, during which people could not go outside from home if not for just shopping food. And many cities have closed their public parks. So in this case, virtual nature may have offered some relief to some people. 
virtual, virtual reality technology is becoming mainstream and some has uh, predicted that uh, virtual reality will be so present in our life as smartphones are mm. now. So this gives us the potential to bring nature to people instead of only encourage people to go to nature. Hmm. I know that you and your colleagues have been researching about virtual nature and health. Can you share some of the findings with us, please? Well, here probably I need to take a little step back and uh, give some context about the field of research mm -hmm. uh, a little broad in a broader perspective. Uh, you may experience yourself that uh, by when you walk in a forest or walk in a, par in a park or maybe relax on a beach, uh, you feel relaxed, maybe energetic, energized. And this is not just a personal feeling. Science have been showing that experiences in nature for different reasons can actually provide health benefits, both on physical health and psychological health. To give you an example, it, one of the first and classic studies have shown that patients who underwent surgery and then recovered in a hospital room that had a view with a, vi a window with a view on uh, in nature, they recovered faster and they required less pain medication compared with patients who were recovering in a room with, without a, a view on nature. At the same in other studies also, they have found that uh, experiences in nature can provide psychological benefits such as improving mood, but also protect from poor mental health, both in the short term and in the long term. So my research has investigated some of these research questions, but I'm being particularly interested in the relationship between nature, health and physical activity where physical activity is, can be seen both as a mean to get in contact with nature, but also as one of the pathways, one of the reasons why nature is beneficial for people's health, because we know physical activity is good for health. And sometimes the feeling good effect of being out in nature uh, can provide a motivation for people to move. So for example, because I know I will feel good in a park, then I will take a walk and this will in, in turn also provide me uh, some good physical exercise. So uh, this is something I've been looking uh, at. But in most recent years, I've been very interested in, in the potential of virtual nature as a tool to extend these benefits to certain groups of people, like those I mentioned before, who have barriers to go often to real nature and also maybe to uh, use it as a supplement in the treatment for some particular groups of uh, patients, mm. like for example, people who suffer from depression or from mental health challenges. But at the moment we are, with my colleagues, we are first of all exploring the extent to which virtual nature can actually provide similar psychological and physiological responses that those that are people can experience in real nature. Is it really the real thing, the same thing? Mm -hmm. And also we are looking at ways to combine uh, VR, VR with uh, physical activity, for example, by connecting a VR headset with a treadmill, like in the video I showed before. And this is not an easy task because many people feel a little dizzy or uncomfortable when they are immersed in these virtual environments. So adding the physical activity components can make think of things more challenging. Mm. So we are now looking at how we can best solve these challenges and make uh, virtual nature comfortable and actually provide those benefits we, we want to give. Mm. Aren't you afraid that technology eventually will replace real nature? I have to say that I am a little concerned for this. We know from the past that technology has in many instances uh, caused, for example, uh, challenges, health challenges like physical inactivity. Mm. Uh, people may prefer to drive rather than walk or bike. Screen time is often 
associated with more sedentary time. Um, so in this sense, yes, virtual nature may, for some people also, come to re um, replace real mm. nature. But at the same time, I'm also optimistic about this technology because in, in some of our studies, we found some preliminary findings suggesting that when people are exposed to virtual nature, like for example, that, vi that uh, virtual nature installation I showed before, uh, after even just 10 minutes, they feel more connected with the natural world. They feel like closer to nature. And also they report they would like to visit the place in reality and that they would like to exercise more outdoors. These are just preliminary findings, but su it suggests that virtual nature may actually encourage people to go outside. Mm -hmm. So I think we don't necessarily have to see a technology as something that will bring people away from nature, but uh, virtual reality could be part of the solution to bring people back to nature. Mm. Thank you so much, Diwana. This was really an eye-opening dialogue. Thank you to you too. Thank you.